Gov, the government website that's having so much trouble, it's not even finished yet. It was launched without being done. With us now, Republican Congressman Michael Burgess of Texas, the Vice Chairman of the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee. Congressman, you sat in today uh, on these hearings. You saw what was said. I, I want to replay some of the sound uh, about how the website's not even done yet. Listen to this. What portion or percentage of the website remained to be created when he launched on October 1st? Um, I don't have an exact percentage. Um, I think uh, some of previous conversations when people ask about whether things were complete, uh, I look at it in terms of overall marketplace systems. Uh, so you've never talked about what's complete, what's not complete? I How think there was a go? set of priority functions that needed to be in place. Like, for example, you had to um, authenticate an individual. That's a key function that had well, to be. Well, how much do we have to build today still? I mean, what do we need to build? 50%, 40%, 30%? I think it's uh, just an approximation. Uh, we're probably sitting somewhere between 60 and 70% because we still have to build but the system. 60 or 70% that needs to be built still? Because we still have to build the payment systems uh, to make payments to issuers so in January. Stunning. Stunning. This website not done. And it's unclear to me, Congressman, if uh, Chow is saying that 60 percent needs to is yet to be built or 40 percent is yet to be built. Either way, it's a nightmare. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And also what he's telling you, I mean, sure, everyone likes to say, oh, the website will be fixed and, uh, and then we'll be fine. No, we will not, because what happens in January, February, March, is providers who render services will need to be paid. And I think if reading between the lines of what uh, Mr. Chow was, was telling the committee is they are, not, they are not ready at this point to be able to process those payments to providers. What's going to happen to our doctor offices? What's going to happen to our hospitals when their accounts receivable balloon out over 120 days? I'm telling you, you can't afford to keep your practice open when that happens. It's unbelievable. You're a doctor, so you know exactly what the impact would be. I, I, you know, the other thing that blew me away today, conversation about McKinsey, which was hired by the administration to, to give them the sense of how things were going. And all along the way, McKinsey putting up his hand saying, this site is not ready for prime time. Listen to this exchange. You were not briefed at all that there was a McKinsey report or presentation going on? I knew that uh, McKinsey had been uh, brought in to conduct some interviews and assessments and report to our administrator, um, in which I have actually participated in some of those. You participated in the interviews that when, when McKinsey was exploring right. this? But I was uh, uh, given the final report. Not given the final report. We pay for a report from McKinsey. Nobody pays any attention to it. What do you say? But, 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 remember, okay, maybe Henry Chow did not get the final report, but people at the White House did. And that information has been provided to the committee, the people in the West Wing, the people over at the old executive office building. They saw the red flags, the, the blinking red light on the dashboard that McKinsey was talking about. And here's one of the stunning things about it. At the very beginning of their report, they, they put forth the concept that we were not allowed to cross the boundary of October 1st. That is, don't check the weather. We're flying anyway. This thing has to go on October 1st. And Jerry, you remember, you and I talked right before the end of September, right before the end of the fiscal year. That's right. Okay, Republicans were poised on a government shutdown. Why wouldn't the administration simply say, okay, Republicans, you know, we're, we're going to try to work with you and we're going to delay the launch of this thing when they wow. knew full well it wasn't Congressman, ready? Congressman, I mean, we've seen this happen over and over again with this administration, right? Uh, the president brought in a bunch of CEOs from all over the country to help him assess unemployment in this country, find out what to do. They wrote a report. He ignored it. He called for a big re report in his first four years in office on what to do with the debt and the deficit. Completely ignored that. This is what this administration does. They pretend to be leading, guiding, finding solutions. But at the end of the day, they don't know how to implement. And I think there's no clearer example of that than the Obamacare website. They lack a closer. No one can close the deal at the end of the day because no one could go to the president and say, "Sir, this is a, this is this is a, this is a fraud that we're, we're rolling out tomorrow. Someone had better do something." Everyone who came to our committee, the Secretary Sebelius, Gary Cohn, who's the head of the office that was in charge of all this stuff, they repeatedly said they would be ready on October first. Right. I asked Gary Gary Cohn on September 9th.
Less than two weeks before they went and crashed, I said, are you going to be ready? It's a yes or no question, sir. He, number one, he wouldn't provide an answer, but the answer he provided was, in fact, absolutely false. It was clearly something that had been rehearsed, wow. and they knew at that point it was absolutely untrue. Well, I, I want to ask you about the, the reason this whole uh, hearing went on anyway was about security. There are huge concerns about yes. the security of Americans' information on this website. So let's say you're desperate to get insurance coverage. You don't have health insurance coverage you want to get it you go on the website then what are you at risk for congressman well to tell you the truth I'm not sure other than the fact that I go on the website myself I'm required to buy my health insurance through the exchange and I'm trying to buy in Texas where I can actually see doctors who are in Texas it, it, it is frightening because you keep having to enter your social security number or give it to someone over the telephone and your application is still not completed. Here we sit, what, six weeks after the launch date and I'm still not through with the process. And I kind of understand what's involved. So I can sympathize with people who are, you know, have, have a, perhaps a little bit lower insurance literacy. This is a huge problem for them. And then they're it's facing... It's a huge problem for everybody. It's a huge yeah. problem for health care in this country. And you know what we know is you said you didn't know about the security risk i know about the security risk it is high apparently there's already been a hacker on this website probably yes. more than that and when chow was asked about this he was he said i can't tell you tell you about this in a public forum we have to go behind closed doors which tells Correct, you the problems are huge i did get the commitment from him to come back and and make that presentation to committee staff behind mm. closed doors you're right we need to know just what the extent of this is he said he couldn't detail it in open session all right we'll give him the opportunity I, I i just wish someone at the white house would take some responsibility and i have no no beef with henry chow he's a career civil servant but someone needs to be held accountable for right. this at some level it is a, it's a, it's a it's a crime that the only person who's lost their job over this was the dc insurance commissioner who had his problem <laughs> was he told the truth uh, that should not be the the, the marker that we use Congressman Burgess, it's always great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank Fascinating you. stuff. Well.